Hey guys, today I'll be running through how to identify the melody of a song, which is one of the essential steps to learning songs by ear. Before we get started with identifying melodies, we need to know what key the song is in. For instance, if we are working with Can You Feel The Love Tonight by Elton John, it is in the key of B-flat major. We also need to know the 7 notes in the key and their ranking in the scale. In the case of B-flat major, we know it has 2 flats, E-flat and B-flat. So we know that the 7 notes in a B-flat major scale are B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G, and A. And your ranking is as follows. B flat is the first note, C is the second note, and so on. Lastly, we need to know that these seven notes in the song's key have a much higher probability of appearing in the melody than the five notes they are not inside. The notes not in the song's key do appear from time to time, but appear much, much less than the notes in the key. Without further ado, let's jump into the steps to identify melodies, as well as how to practice this skill. The first step to identifying the melody of a song is to split the song into its various sections, such as the introduction, verse, chorus, bridge, and so on. Except for the intro and outro, each section is often repeated more than once in the entire song, and more often than not, have very similar melodies that we can largely reuse in order to not do double work. Now, we can identify the melody of each section independently from one another, one at a time. Next, for each section, we identify the melody one note at a time. For Can You Feel The Love Tonight? which is in the key of B-flat major, we know that the 7 notes in B-flat major have much higher probabilities of appearing, so it makes more sense to test out these 7 notes first. To figure out the note for each syllable, we can use a trial and error method and play each of these 7 notes against the syllable. The note that matches the syllable's pitch is likely the correct note for the syllable and do remember to write it down. There's a calm surrender. La 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 After figuring out the first note, we repeat the process and move on to the rest of the notes. This process might seem super slow, but don't worry as there are ways to speed this up. This is where relative pitch comes into play. Once again, relative pitch is the ability to tell the pitch of an unknown note if you are already given an anchor or reference note. For example, if you know how B flat sounds, you can tell that this note is an F. Having good relative pitch can allow you to identify each note much faster than using the trial and error method or even groups of notes at one go. For instance, using Can You Feel The Love Tonight once again as an example, we first keep in mind the first note of the key the song is in, also known as the tonic note or the root note, which is just B flat here. Here's the first syllables of the song, La. And when we compare it to the root note B flat, we can tell from our relative pitch that this is the sixth note of the scale, which is G. When moving on to the next few notes, we can either compare the next note to our current note or to our root note, whichever you feel more comfortable with. As such, with good relative pitch, we identify notes a lot quicker, making the entire process a lot faster. That being said, relative pitch can take some time to develop and might be pretty difficult for those of you who are just starting out. It's perfectly normal to feel this way, as many of us do at first due to the steep initial learning curve. But the good news is that it gets exponentially easier as you put in more work and progress further. One way to improve your relative pitch is to make use of ear training tools or applications online. There are a number of such apps online across multiple platforms for free and you can use these tools to practice your relative pitch. Pitch Garden has a year training tool you can find online at https pitchgarden.com slash year trainer, which contains multiple year training exercises you can practice on to improve your relative pitch. I've put together a mini roadmap here to practicing your relative pitch in order to identify melodies. We first start with identifying if one note is higher or lower than the other, regardless of what pitch both notes are. Once we get better at telling if one note is higher or lower than another note, we can move on to identifying individual notes given an anchor note. Here, the given anchor note, which is normally middle C, will first play, followed by another note, which we need to identify by comparing it to the first note. Alternatively, if we wish to practice identifying intervals, we can simply select the intervals category here and practice identifying the intervals between two notes instead. Note that you can change the difficulty level if you wish to challenge yourself even more.
Finally, once we get better at identifying individual notes or intervals, we can move on to identifying a sequence of notes, which is what identifying melodies are about. We move to the notes and sequences of notes category and can select a level of difficulty that we are comfortable with. Once we click the test me button, a sequence of notes will play and our job is to identify all the notes. Do give these exercises a shot if you wish to improve your relative pitch in order to identify melodies in songs. I've included a link to Pitch Garden's ear training tool in the description down below and do give it a try if you haven't already. Another way to improve your relative pitch is to consistently practice your ability to identify melodies through transcribing songs that you have not learned before. Here, transcribing refers to listening to songs, attempting to learn its melody by ear, and writing down the melody. Don't worry if you feel that your relative pitch is not at that level yet, or if your music theory still needs improvement. The best way to learn to play by ear is to just start regardless, and learn by doing and through trial and error instead of worrying about your music theory level or analyzing whether you're ready to play by ear. I need you to just start trying. Don't worry if your first song takes way too long as it is perfectly normal and a necessary stepping stone for you to level up your relative pitch. This skill will definitely take some time to develop as the initial learning curve can be quite steep. But to learn to play by ear well, you need only two things, consistency and a positive mindset. With that, thanks for watching and do give this video a like if you feel that I'm giving you value and do consider subscribing if you haven't already if you don't want to miss more of these videos.